My presentation is about the institutional repositories in Sudan. And before going into technical issues, I would like to introduce Sudan to you because I know that in the media, Sudan is a poor, with war, with very bad situation. You never expect it to be, to have uh, positive sides. So Sudan is uh, in this location. It's the hearting beat of Africa. I consider it the hearting beat of Africa. It is the linkage uh, between the Arab world and Africa. It is one of the richest countries in, in terms of natural resources. It has um, animal resources, water, uh, gab Arabic, and gold. <laughs> and it has an old civilization. This is, I know, will be new to you. You don't know that, sorry. <laughs> sorry, it, uh, it is, it has a civilization uh, backdated to 3000 BC. It is not the Egyptian civilization. It is in the center to the north. And for hundreds of years at that era, Sudan ruled both Egypt and Sudan, the two countries. So we have pyramids. You have 300 pyramids, but they are not big as those in uh, Egypt. And um, it's wonderful to visit. <laughs> Uh, Sudan is a big country and it has 19 ethnic groups uh, with 597 subgroups that makes it an African country that has all the cultures uh, in terms of education. Uh, education is backdated to 1898. We have the University of Khartoum, one of the oldest universities in, in Africa. Uh, and this building is the main library. It's still, it's still there. It exists. That same building is still there uh, and still used. Part of it is uh, turned to be uh, an, a museum because it's more than 100 years old. Um, so uh, this is one of the biggest universities in Sudan. But we have 130 higher education institutions, 40 public universities, and other colleges, uh, research institutions, um, many, many of them, but, uh, and private universities, of course, and a million of students, and about 18,000 staff members. Now we can move to our topic. <laughs> in institutional uh, repositories in Sudan, it happened that in 2007, we, ha we started to get support from uh, Eiffel. Um, we, we, we started to be members in 2003, but in 2007, Eiffel CEO, Rima, uh, visited Sudan and a workshop was held in Khartoum, in, the Sud in Sudan University of Science and Technology, with participation of ministers, vice chancellors, it was a big event. And we started to know uh, that libraries are very important. We started to understand that uh, we need uh, to participate in, um, in international uh, organizations. And uh, we got support from Eiffel. We got access to open to e-resources, commercial e-resources. Uh, they negotiate with publishers. And uh, we get uh, free access because we are in the uh, least developed country. And we started to know that there, there is a necessity to have a consortium, a sort of, um, but it was, we, we started with a committee for librarians in, in Sudan. Uh, we also started to, to learn about open access, IRENA. Uh, in 2010, Eiffel funded a project, a small project for raising awareness on open access at the Faculty of Science uh, of the University of Khartoum. It was successful, but it, was, it didn't spread to, to cover all the institutions. Um, I can say that uh, I will start from this project in 2011. From this project, we started to do something useful. UNESCO funded the project. It was only $26,000. But uh, with local component, uh, the NREN of Sudan, Sudanese Research and Education Network, uh, started to, to fund more and to invite more participants to the project. The project started with three universities, the big universities, Sudan University, Khartoum University, and Anilian University. Uh, um, I was the CEO of Sudrin at that time, and I was manager of the project because I headed the, the steering committee. 
it was an honor for me. Uh, the project components uh, were very simple, like just to select the best open source software, and we selected this space, and to uh, capacity building for librarians and IT staff, establishing then establishing and customizing the system. The project had two components, uh, library management system and digital library. It wasn't called, at that time, it wasn't called repository. But when it is finished, we called it repository. We understood the meaning of repositories. Then it was a successful project, um, project outcomes. In 2014, the same committee started to prepare the articles of association for uh, the first Sudanese Academic Library Consortium and submitted uh, the, the article and the request for registration to the ministry. And it is registered in 2014. And 20, in 2018, now we have uh, training, ongoing training, because we have SALC. Uh, more than 180, I think this is not the right, the correct number. It's more than that. I don't know the, the exact number of uh, trained librarians. And we have about 20 repositories. The project started with only three. But because it's the, the having SALC and continuous efforts from the librarians, uh, the work didn't stop. There is sustainability in the work, it's continuous work. So 20 repositories were established. This is a photo for a uh, training session for librarians in Darfur. Because when you see Darfur on TV, you see uh, poor people looking, searching for water, uh, holding the bark, and you never, and you'd never imagine that this is University of Jalinje, where the area is unsettled at all. There is war. There are many, many problems. But education is ongoing. There are students go to the, the university, and those are the librarians of three universities. Uh, Zalinje University hosted the training session, but the librarians come from three universities in Darfur. Okay. And this is the project management meeting, where um, during the project management, uh, I just wanted to show you this photo because this photo shows four women. There is a woman in behind that uh, woman. And four men, this is equal, this is fair. And four librarians and four ICT people. Can you imagine it? And three universities. Those, those came from theory, three universities. In Africa, I don't know if this is the case in Europe or other countries. We compete. We never work together. I am from the University of Khartoum. This is the oldest university, the best. I cannot collaborate with Sudan University. But we managed, we succeeded in this committee to get all these collaborations. I was a head of that committee. I was chairing the committee. I'm proud to have that. But they were good people. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was the community. And now, a key successful factors. I don't want to take more time. Uh, collaboration was one of the key successor factors between librarians and IC departments, collaboration between universities, and of course support from Sudren, the NREN of Sudan. Yesterday I accessed, only yesterday I got this slide, <laughs> I put this slide, I accessed open door to see information about our repositories. It has a good list, Sudan, but those are only nine repositories. I don't know. <laughs> May somebody technical can tell me this, the reason. I, I know that there are 20 repositories. I know that there are some technical errors. This one, this is one of the repositories that exists now. If you access it online, you will find it. It's dscordofan.edu.sd. This is in West Sudan, and it has 600 items in the, library, in the repository, but it is not in the art list. Maybe there's something, there is error in the in the repository itself. And uh, we have challenges, current situation. I told you about the positive side of the project, lack of quality control. I know that these repositories are not good. <laughs> there are many, many, many uh, errors. You know, as, as a researcher, I try to access some uh, items. I got errors. There are the, the metadata is not good. High cost of digitization of hard copy of materials. Lack of awareness among decision makers on the new role of librarians, you don't know. Poor open access policies. We have open access policies at the University of Khartoum. 
for example, but it is not online. And even uh, Kordofan University, many universities, I know that they have open access policies. It is not very well outlined and it is not uploaded. Sometimes in some universities uploaded the open access policy, but I think they need some awareness on this. Uh, lack of awareness in our research community in general on these, uh, in these terminologies, open science, open data. Open source software is well known because we have sanction. In Sudan, we cannot buy uh, proprietary uh, uh, software. We cannot have license from Windows or there is sanction against Sudan and we suffer, people suffer, not the government. So we started to build our own uh, application, software applications using open source software. Uh, open educational resources, most of the universities of Sudan use Moodle. They use these, but they don't understand the concepts. Uh, uh, current situation, this is maybe my last slide. We live, <laughs> we have all the stakeholders in isolated islands. IT staff, students, researchers, librarians, policy makers, rectors, governments, nothing combined them. Even SAL could not do this. And I would like to tell you that I have just learned from, your, from this event that we need the researchers to be involved in even what we are doing with the repositories. They are not, they are not uh, working with us, they are isolated. However, these challenges, I believe that keep your face to always toward the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. This is how we succeeded in our last projects. Thank you very much.